Hello there, Mr. Sutton here, bringing you this AB Calculus 3.9 lesson on tangent lines and higher order derivatives. In this one, we will be finding equations of tangent lines, determining where on a curve the slope equals a certain value, finding second and higher derivatives of functions, and as a real life application, we'll be using the third derivative to figure out the jerk of a ride. For the warm up on this one, we're being asked to find the equation of a normal line to this f of x function, which is 3 times cosine of x, at the point x equals pi over 2. Pause the video and see how far you can get on this one. All right, let's see how that went. So first off, uh, what is a normal line? Well, this is a line that is perpendicular to a tangent line, but also goes through this same point at x equals pi over 2. So whatever the slope of the tangent line is, we're going to have to take the opposite reciprocal of that to get the normal line. So that's just something to think about as we move forward. Now, writing an equation out for this thing, I, th I think it helps if you put out your formula and then you kind of know what you're looking for. So our point slope formula would be helpful here. That's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. And now we know that we just have to do a little shopping here for x1, y1, and m. Now, the good news is we actually already brought x1 with us. It's this pi over 2 number here. Uh, y1 is going to be the next easiest thing to get. That's going to be the value of y when x equals pi over 2. So basically, f of pi over 2. And f of pi over 2, that's just going to be 3 times cosine of pi over 2. Cosine of pi over 2, that's the cosine at 90 degrees, the x value at 90 degrees, which is 0. So this whole thing is then coming out to 0 for that y value. And at this point, we're going to have to go ahead and find m. Now, we can't find m right away, at least not for the normal line. We have to find m, the slope, for the tangent line first. So for that, we just have to take the derivative of this function at x equals pi over 2. Let's first take the general derivative of 3 cosine of x. That's going to be negative 3 sine of x. And now we can just plug pi over 2 into that. So sine of pi over 2, that's 1. So this is negative 3 times 1, so negative 3 if you simplify it. You don't have to, but it's not a bad idea to do so at this point in the game. And now uh, we're not quite there yet. We don't have the reciprocal slope. To get that, we have to take the opposite reciprocal of this tangent slope. So we're going to have negative, and then I'll put in the parentheses negative 3 to the negative 1. This is what's going on. We're negating it and taking the reciprocal. So this is going to be a positive 1 over 3. And we now have everything we need to go back to our point slope formula and plug things in. So y minus y1, that's y minus 0. We said that we have a slope of 1 third. And remember, this was the normal line, not the tangent line. And then finally, we had x minus pi over 2. We already had pi over 2. And you could either leave it like this, or if you see a need to convert it to match multiple choice, uh, there's a lot of places you can go from here. For this next problem, they're asking us to determine the x values at which the graph of this function has a horizontal tangent. So they're basically asking where the derivative of this thing equals a certain value. Pause the video and see if you can figure out how to set this one up. All right, so a horizontal tangent means I have a slope of 0. So that means I need to figure out at what x value f prime of x equals 0. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of this. That's going to be 10x minus 20. And again, we want to figure out where this equals 0. Well, add 20 and then divide by 10, you've got an x value of 2. Now, another way you might see this problem is they might ask you uh, where this graph is parallel to another line or perpendicular. Uh, so in all these cases, you're just figuring out the desired slope and setting your derivative equal to it. For this problem, if the line x plus 8y equals 0 is tangent to the curve y equals 2x to the fourth plus k, we want to know the value of k. Uh, so this one is a little bit trickier. We've got this tangent line. We've got this function and this mystery constant here. In order to figure out the value of k, our general strategy is we need to figure out an x and a y value that are on this curve. And we don't really know a whole lot else about this curve, except that it has this tangent line. So that's telling us that this line intersects this curve at some point, the point at which the derivative of these two functions is the same. Um, so our general strategy then, we are going to find that point of tangency and then plug that in to figure out the k value. Now, in order to figure out the point of tangency, 
we need to figure out where the slope of our tangent line and f prime, the derivative of this function, are the same. So let's start by figuring out the slope of the tangent line and the derivative of this function. Pause the video and take a moment to do those steps. All right, so for this tangent line, we can figure out the slope in a lot of ways. Probably the fastest is just to put this in y equals mx plus b form. So if we subtract x and divide by 8, we have y equals negative 1 8 x, from which we get a slope of negative 1 8. Okay, so now we need the derivative of this function here. Now when I find y prime over here, conveniently this k, which is a constant, is just going to be 0. Um, so we just end up with y prime equals 8x cubed. Now we know that this slope and this slope have to match up at this point of tangency that we're looking for. So let's set them equal and solve. So I can start by dividing both sides by 8. That'll give me negative 1 over 64. And then cube rooting both sides, I have an x value of negative 1 fourth. So that gives me an x value. Still not enough to figure out k, though. We also need a y value. And I can't get the y value from the original equation. The good news is the y value we're looking for is going to be the same y value on this tangent line here. So you can use the tangent line to get y at the point of tangency. It only works at the point of tangency, nowhere else, but hey, that's something. So our tangent line here, we have this simplified equation, negative 1 8 x. Let's just plug negative 1 fourth into this equation. And then multiplying these together now will give us the y value. So that's going to be positive 1 over 32. All right. I've got an x, I've got a y. Let's take the original equation here of our, our function and plug in x and y. So we have a y value of negative or positive 1 over 32. This is going to equal 2 times our x value of negative 1 fourth to the fourth plus k. If I raise this to the fourth power, this is 1 over 256. Reducing that with 2, I have a 1 over 128. Now, 1 over 32 is Really, if, if we get a common denominator, that's 4 over 128. Subtracting 1 over 128 gives us 3 128 So there's our k value. So we've got one more big concept to introduce here, and that's the concept of higher order derivatives. Let's introduce this with a real life problem. Let's say the position of a rider on the psychodome ride here, which looks pretty psycho, is given by this crazy polynomial. We want to find a formula for the jerk which is the third derivative of position for this ride. So what's this idea of this third derivative? What's the idea of having more than just the first derivative, really? Um, so the nth derivative in general, this just means taking the derivative n times. So if you want the third derivative, you take the derivative once, then you take the derivative of that derivative, then you take the derivative of that derivative. So it's taking derivatives of derivatives. And there's two different types of notation for this. We have uh, n thrift derivative notation in Lagrange form, and there's also going to be a Leibniz form I'll show you in a sec. Uh, let's do Lagrange first, though. This uses the f prime notation. So our first derivative was just f prime. We know about that one. If I want the second derivative, I need f double prime. Third derivative is f triple prime, and after that, we just write a little number in a parentheses up here. So fourth derivative, we'd put like f uh, fourth derivative. This is just derivative four times, and in general, we have the nth derivative symbolized like this. Now, you have another alternative to this that you'll see. Uh, this is the Leibniz notation with the d over dx kind of notation. So first derivative we already know, that's dy over dx. The second derivative in this form, it's kind of look kind of weird. It's going to be a d squared y over dx squared. Now, you might wonder why the d is being squared and not the y. Well, what's really happening here is you're doing d over dx of dy over dx. The d's essentially get multiplied, the dx's do, but the y's not so much. Um, long story short, this is what the notation looks like. If we want third derivative, here's what that looks like. We could go fourth derivative, nth derivative in general, so we can keep going with this. Anyway, let's go ahead now and find the third derivative of position for this function. So we'll start off by finding the first derivative, f prime of t. So that's going to be 4t cubed minus, just using our power rule, 21t squared plus 4t, and then the 15 gets differentiated away. Pause the video and see if you can finish this one off. All right, so for our next step, we need the second derivative. We're basically just going to take the derivative of the first derivative here. 
So that'll be 12t squared minus 42t plus 4. And we need one more derivative. They said third derivative, so f triple prime of t. That's going to be 24t minus 42, and we're done. We'll do one more problem. For this one, if we have x cubed minus y cubed equals 7, we want to know the value of the, this is the second derivative at 2 comma 1. Pause the video, and I'll see if you can get a formula for the first derivative of this function. All right, so for this one, we're just going to use implicit differentiation. It's going to be kind of a pain if we uh, try to cube root stuff here. Um, so going from left to right, we've got 3x squared minus 3y squared times dy over dx, because we're in diffing here. Uh, that's going to equal derivative of 7, which is 0. Now let's isolate dy over dx, subtracting negative, uh, subtracting 3x squared from both sides, and then dividing by negative 3y squared. We can cancel out those negative 3s, so this is just going to be x squared over y squared. Awesome. Now we need another derivative. We need a second derivative. For this, we are going to need the quotient rule. So let me set up my box and ribbon for that. I've got my numerator x squared, denominator y squared. Their derivatives will be 2x, and this is going to be 2y dy over dx, imp diff again. Multiplying that out now. We could get a formula for the second derivative, um, but I know eventually I'm just going to have to plug in 2 comma 1. Um, so I think I'm just going to plug that in inside the box and then put it all back together. Now, in order to plug things in, you'll notice we have a dy over dx here, and that's something new. We actually need to know the value of the first derivative at 2 comma 1 in order to plug anything in anywhere. Alternatively, if you wanted to, you could substitute x squared over y squared for this dy over dx, and then it wouldn't be an issue. Um, but, but I'm going to go ahead and plug in uh, 2 comma 1 to this derivative, because I know I need it in some way to find and plug in this first derivative. So evaluating this at 2 comma 1, this is really going to be 2 squared over 1 squared, which comes out to 4. So if we have an x value of 2, a y value of 1, and a dy over dx of 4, here is what we can write x squared, that's going to be 2 squared, which is 4. y squared is 1 squared, so that's 1. 2 times x is 2 times 2, so that's also 4. And then this is going to be 2 times 1 times 4, uh, so grand total of 8 for that. Using the ribbon to put it all back together, we've got 4 times 1, and now this is the value of the second derivative at the point 2 comma 1. We've got 4 times 1 minus 4 times 8, all over 1 squared. So this is going to be 4 minus 32, which is negative 28, over 1 is still negative 128, or negative 28. So there we are. So that's it for tangent lines and second derivatives. Till next time, Mr. Sutton signing off.